This video was brought to you by the ILC. Hello there once again. Welcome back to our exam one review. This time we'll be doing problem two and we'll begin with problem 2a. Is this graph a function? And if so, is it a one-to-one -one function? To tell if a graph is a function, we do something called the vertical line test. And we are going to see if there's any vertical line that we can draw that would cross this function twice. If it always crosses once and once only, then it is a function. If it crosses twice or more, then it's not a function. If we look at this picture, the only place where a vertical line could potentially cross more than once is along this dotted line where it looks like the pieces overlap. However, if we look to the upper part of the function, we have a closed circle. And on the lower part of the function, we have an open circle. The most important thing to realize is that open circles don't count. So that even though it appears this vertical line crosses the function twice, we don't count the open circle toward that total, but we do count the closed circle. So, if we look at the rest of the line, if we look at this diagonal piece, and this curve, and this diagonal piece, no matter what vertical line we draw, it will only go through once. So, based on that, we can say yes, this is a function. Now, in order for it to be one-to-one, -one, we do the horizontal line test. And we see if there is any horizontal line that we can draw that will cross the function more than once. Now, over much of the top part of this function, if you draw a horizontal line, it will cross the function twice, once in this position and once in this position. That's going to be true for quite a bit of the function. So we can say that no, this is not one-to-one. -one. That answers part 2a. Now for part 2b and 2c, what are the domain and range? If we're going to write the domain, we are going to check the x values. And we'll start by drawing a number line. Now let's look at the x values. We have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. And we'll put the positive ones here as well. So this function begins at negative 4 with an open circle. The function continues from negative 4 to negative 2. Remember, we're only looking at x values. At negative 2, we have another open circle. But notice also at negative 2, we have a closed circle. Now remember, if you have to make a choice, we are going to choose the closed circle. So we have an open and a closed, both at negative 2, but the closed will take priority. So the function will go from negative 4 to negative 2. We'll go ahead and leave the closed circle in there. And then the piece continues from negative 2, crosses through a closed circle at negative 1, and hits an open circle, a positive 1. So at negative 1, we have a closed circle. And at 1, we have an open circle. Then we continue on from 1 to 3. So we'll put a closed circle on 3, 
That's where the function stops. And that's what our domain's number line will look like. Now, to write the domain, we break the domain in the pieces based only on the open circles. So we will put a dotted line here on the open circles. Don't worry about the closed circles. So the first region in the domain will be between these two dotted lines at negative 4 and 1. And we'll call that region A. The second piece will be between 1 and 3, which is this second open circle here, and where the function ends here. We'll label that with B. So our domain will be piece A, union piece B, which we'll write piece A goes from negative 4 to 1 in parentheses, and union piece B, which goes from 1 to 3. We'll put parentheses around the 1. Now for the 3, since it is closed, we are going to use a square bracket rather than a parentheses. And so we'll write the answer as negative 4 to 1, union 1 to 3. Now for the range, we check the y values. So let's have a look at the y values. We'll write negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4 on the y-axis, and 1, 2, 3, and 4. Our lowest y value is going to be negative 3 in this position here. And this piece continues up to negative 1, which is this position here. So we'll write our first piece as negative 3 to negative 1. We're going to be skipping from this bottom piece up to this top piece. And this top piece begins, our lowest y value is going to be 0. Since that's part of the line, we will consider this closed, so we'll say square bracket. And the highest this piece goes is this point here. The y value at this point is 4, and once again that 4 will be closed. So our answer will be negative 3 to negative 1 for the bottom piece, union 0 to 4 for the top piece. Once again, the 0 and 4 are both closed because the 0 is simply part of the line and the 4 is a closed circle. And so this is our answer. Now for problems 2D and 2E. Problem 2D says find f at negative 2. Now what this means is we are to let x equal negative 2 and give the y as our answer. So let's look at our x-axis. Here's negative 1, here's negative 2, and we see two places where the function is at negative 2. We have a closed circle and an open circle. But once again, if you have to make a choice, choose the closed circle. So we'll let this closed circle be our answer, and we'll give the y value there as our answer. Let's look to the y-axis. Here's 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we'll say that our answer is simply 4. If you wish to write this as an ordered pair, you can say x, comma y. So if you're ever asked for the ordered pair, we would say negative 2, comma 4. But if they just ask for the value, you can simply say 4. Now for 2e, this could get a little tricky. It says if fx is negative 1, find x. This is sort of the opposite of what we just did. This means to let y equal negative 1, and then give x as your answer.
So let's look to the y-axis. Here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Well, here at negative 1, if we draw a horizontal line through negative 1, the only thing we hit is an open circle, and that open circle is here. But remember, open circles don't count. So actually, there is no y value that could be negative 1. There's no x we can give either, because this dotted line at negative 1 does not actually touch the function. It only passes through an open circle, which doesn't count. So the only thing we can say is that x equals d and e, or does not exist. It's a little bit unusual, but it is something we have to keep our eyes out for if we see a lot of open circles in our functions. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.